Hello, today we are talking about business emails. Many people need to write emails for business. But are your emails difficult to understand? Do they look unprofessional? Stick around and we'll show you some of the very best tips to make sure that you look professional when writing emails. English is used all around the world in business and if you want to develop your career or stand out in a global market then you need to be able to communicate effectively in English. Writing business emails can be very difficult if you are not fluent in English. So here are some excellent tips to help you to seem professional when writing emails. So how do we start a business email? Well first of all you need to greet the person. So you can do that in a few different ways depending on who you are talking to. If it is a formal email and you do not know the person very well you can say dear mister or dear Ms. We do not use the term dear Mrs because we usually don't know the marital situation of the woman that we are writing to. So it is safer to write dear Ms. So in this case we are going to write an email to dear Mr. Anderson. So in this case we would say dear Mr. Anderson. We would not say dear Mr. John. We do not use the first name. We use the surname dear Mr. Anderson. Now what do you do if you don't know the person's name at all? Ideally you want to try and find out the person's name. It's usually quite easy to do a quick Google search if you're writing to a company you can find a manager's name quite easily these days. So if possible find their name it makes the email much more personal. If however you cannot find their name then you can simply write Dear Sir Cash Madam. Now in this case we do know the person's name. We are writing to Mr. John Anderson. So we can write Dear Mr. Anderson. If however it's someone that we know quite well, perhaps we've met them once or twice before, then we can simply write Hi John. That's fine. Hello John is also fine. These are less formal ways of greeting the person. Now we need to introduce ourselves. We have not met John Anderson before so we need to tell him who we are and where we work. So you can introduce yourself by saying simply Dear Mr Anderson my name is David Promotions Officer at Global Tech Company. So there we go. We've introduced ourselves. We have told Mr. Anderson what my name is, David, my role within the company. I am the Promotions Officer and the company I work in this case is Global Tech Company. If you have already spoken to the person before, if you know them, then you can simply write, Hi John, I hope you're doing well. Now we need to move on to the reason for writing. Now in business emails, it's important that you get to the point quickly. There's an English expression that time is money. So by being brief and to the point in our email, we are showing respect to the person that we are emailing. We are recognising that their time is valuable and they probably do not have time to waste. So you might want to say, I'm writing about next week's meeting, please can you send me your papers as soon as possible? Or you could write, as promised, I'm sending you the latest draft of our marketing designs. Or you might want to say, it was nice to meet you the other day, I just wanted to touch base and let you know that I'm available for a meeting at your earliest convenience. Maybe you want to say, as discussed, attached are the minutes from the last meeting, let me know if you want to make any amendments. 
or maybe it is, please see the attached funding agreement. Please can you sign and return it as soon as possible. Now this brings us on to the next point and that is making a request. The last action that was given there gives a call to action. We are asking someone to do something for us. If you require something from the person that you are emailing, then you need to be as clear as possible in your email. You need to tell them exactly what you need from them and make sure that there is no misunderstanding. The key to a successful business email is that it is clear and simple. Misunderstandings can cost money. So requests that you are making to people might include, just as we have there, we have said, please see the attached funding agreement, please can you sign and return it as soon as possible. So we are making a request. Other requests might include, please can you let me know your answer by the end of the week? Or, please can you let me know your availability? I would like to have a meeting with you, but I need to know what days you are available. Please let me know your availability for next week. Are you finding this information useful? If so, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Let's get back to it. Now, another reason for sending a business email may simply be to say thank you for something. If someone has provided a service for you or for your company, you may want to thank them for that service. So here are some good examples of ways that we can thank people. One that is used by customer service staff a lot is simply saying thank you for your query. We will try our best to find an answer and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Sometimes it may be that you have requested some information from someone. Perhaps they have now provided you with an update. So you can say thank you for the update. Or you can say thank you for looking into that for me. Many emails that you send will contain attachments and it is very important that you draw attention to those attachments so that they are not overlooked. So you can simply say, for example, please see the attached funding agreement or attached are the minutes from the finance meeting. This draws attention to the fact that there is an attachment with your email and it makes sure that the recipient, the person that is receiving your email, will not miss that important document. Now how do we end a business email? It's often good to be able to offer assistance at the end of the email. So you might want to say, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Or perhaps you will want to say, I'll keep you posted on the progress. It simply means I will keep you updated on any progress that has been made. To end a business email, you will usually close with one of three different sentences. The ones that I use are regards, best wishes, or thanks. So if it's someone that I do not know very well, if it's quite a formal email, then I will end with the word regards. If it's someone that I know quite well, I've met them two or three times, then I might say best wishes. It is less formal, a little bit more friendly. If the person I am sending an email to has provided me with some information, if they have helped me in any way, then I will usually end the email with the word thanks. Now we're going to look at your email signature. Your email signature is very important when writing a business email. Your signature should have the following information. Firstly, there should be your full name. Then you would have your job title. You would then want to have the name of your company or the website that people can click on and, and learn more about the company on. Then you will want to have your email address and your phone number so that people can easily contact you if they do have any further queries. This makes it much easier for people to be able to contact you and your business in the future. So here is our final email that we are sending to John Anderson. 
It says, Dear Mr. Anderson, my name is David and I work as the Promotions Officer at Global Tech Company. As discussed, please see the attached funding agreement. Please can you sign and return it as soon as possible. If you have any questions, feel free to contact to me. Regards, David Harling, Promotions Officer, Global Tech Company. It's got my email address and my phone number. Now, do you know the difference between CC and BCC in an email? Now, this is very important when sending emails. This is an error that I see a lot and it affects how professional you look when sending emails. If you are emailing more than one person, then you may want to use the CC function. This enables you to copy people into an email without requiring them to do anything. So basically you're saying, I'm sending you this email just for your information. BCC means that you send the email to several people, yet their names do not appear in the sent list. So this is very useful when sending out invitations to meetings, or if you're sending out a document to a mailing list. Perhaps you have a hundred email addresses on your mailing list. You want to BCC people's addresses into the email. Otherwise, you will have just given away all of your client's email addresses and they may not be happy about that. If I receive an email and they have not BCC'd everyone in, then I immediately think less of the person that has sent the email. I know that they are not very professional and they are probably not going to handle my data in a secure manner. So before you press that send button on your email, make sure that you check where you have put people's email addresses. Is it in the to section? Is it in the CC section? Or is it in the BCC section? So that brings us to the end of this lesson on how to write effective business emails. I hope this has been of use to you. If you found this information helpful, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this. Before we leave, what I want you to do is let me know in the comments section below what other topics you would like me to cover on this channel. I'll see you in the next one.